The Upshot Project welcomes you to the Cheeky Travelers Podcast, a show for people who love and aspire to travel. In each episode, you'll get a greater insight into what traveling can do for you as it has for us. From our anecdotes, we aim to inspire you to go out and explore the world around you with an open mind. If you would like to see if our voices match our faces, you're more than welcome to pop over to our YouTube channel, The Upshot Project. But we also have other social media in Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok if you would like to reach out to us. And now, it's time to get lost. Hello, hello everyone, and welcome to another great episode of the Cheeky Travelers podcast. I am Solen, your co-host, and next to me is Mr. Hayden, your other co-host. <laughs> Thanks for the quick fire intro, I appreciate that. Exactly. Uh, well, to start today's episode, Hayden Farrell, <laughs> I'm in a weird mood. Yes, I can tell. I'm in a weird mood. Uh, to, yeah, to start today's episode, we're going to start by the usual cheeky question. Mm-hmm. And I think, well, I hope I have a good one for you today. Would you rather oh, gosh. never run again oh, no. or never see the ocean again? Oh, that is an awful, <laughs> awful thing to ask. I would have to... Oh. Oh. I'm, you're dissecting two of my morals, mate. I know. Two of my values, not my morals, but my values. Oh, that's not very nice at all. That is a very cheeky thing to ask. I would have to say... I don't even know what you're going to say. <laughs> Three, two, one, run it. Never run again? Never run again. Oh, so it means that when you're late, you cannot run either. Uh, yeah. <laughs> shit, you're in deep shit. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm late to a lot of things. Um, oh, that hurt. going into another country like learning how uh, learning the like hi thank you and how much does it cost or something like that um it's pretty easy like you're gonna have time to learn so you know i think i think and i'm sorry for everyone that is listening but i think you're a bit lazy if you don't learn the basics of the country you're going in you know, um, it makes me think of when I went to Bulgaria. I learned the the basics, which I can't remember anymore. I learned the basics, but I also learned that in that country, to say yes, it's uh, with your head, you're actually saying no. And True. to say no with your head, you actually say yes. So that was an important piece of information I had to know. Yeah. I probably find myself doing like circles with my face. I, I like I get so confused. I wouldn't move my head. I would just say yes or no in Bulgarian at this point because it like yeah, it would just mix my mind. That's so brilliant. Much. Yeah, so that's a reason why you need to inform yourself about the languages and the 
the I guess the non-verbal practices yeah, right. that are used in that country. Jake. Like it's not a big deal. They probably know that you know I'm a foreigner, and for me, moving my head from like up and down means yes. They probably know it with uh, the TV and stuff. Yeah, but still, that's actually a good one. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Fair because mm -hmm. like similarly, I have a very uh i don't have a very different opinion to you on that one because i learned that it goes so much further than i expected mm. to learn hi thank you like uh, like excuse me kind yeah. of thing and like yes no and maybe counting to three or five <laughs> so then i could sort of like get yeah. the gist mm -hmm. but like i found that it just gets you so much further exactly. like the, the the people know how to help you and even even they, when they try and speak English, it just means that much more to oh, the whole definitely. interaction. And it can bring you places that you wouldn't have gone otherwise, because the locals are like, oh my God, like he's trying or they're trying to learn my language. I'm going to be nicer. Yeah. I'm going to offer them something. Yes. You know? So on a more selfish level, it can bring you stuff as well in your travel, good experiences or either material stuff. Yeah. Or a free meal or yeah, things like that. I don't know if you've ever had like a free meal because you... Um... Not a free meal, but I when I had my motorcycle accident in Vietnam, mm -hmm. I uh, I stopped at a, like a place afterwards, you know, mm -hmm. like walking like a limp dog or something like that. It was pretty bad. But the lady at the restaurant who owned the little place, she like saw that I was like patched up with, you know, makeshift yeah. bandages and like went... I'll be right back in Vietnamese. Yeah. yeah. Came back and like had like her own home remedies to help me. Okay. And it just felt so nice. But what does it have to do with you speaking the language? Did you say something? So, so like like I like I it was this amazing um like like I said thank you as many times in Vietnamese as possible and I like I said no in mm -hmm. yeah basically I remember saying like I don't need any help I'll be fine. <laughs> but um they were able to speak a little bit of english <laughs> what is up sorry What's up with my face? <laughs> you have something on the corner of your mouth and i'm like <laughs> <It's a joke>. <laughs> <laughs> sorry hayden had something on the corner of his mouth and without uh trying to give too much away it's with words who was saying it with my 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 hands yeah body language <laughs> really awkward on uh, camera sorry for that no, yeah, what were okay. you saying <laughs> but like she she because she heard that i was speaking some english she tried to speak some english and yeah. as, because of that i said thank you as many times as i could mm -hmm. in vietnamese and all the rest of it but no i don't i don't want to be putting tiger balm on an open wound but thank <laughs> you so much for your help like like she was like <laughs> you know is that this like body language thing it was really cool yeah 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 fair enough but um yeah, one of the things that I wanted to dive into with the idea of um, speaking uh, foreign languages and getting lost in translation mm -hmm. and things mm -hmm. like that. Um, so I did a little bit of research. Yeah. Just uh, before this. About the language barrier when you're traveling. The language yeah. barriers when you're traveling. Yeah. And there was a survey done in 2017 by Hostel World, mm -hmm. who I have used a lot. We've used together yep. a fair bit mm -hmm. and they found that about 10 percent of people don't actually travel because of language barriers seriously yeah shit 10 percent. Yeah. 10 percent. so travel. so one in 10 people but like does would that mean that they would travel to countries English spoken people. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> just, let's not pick on the pommies too much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going to receive hate for that, but that's okay. That's okay. Most of them, most of the English spoken travelers I've met, they were not learning any languages when traveling mm. at all. At all. So I, 
in my opinion, they're the ones that <laughs> should learn a bit more and stop thinking that, oh, everyone in this, on this planet speaks English, so they're going to make an effort to speak to me anyway, because... Because, you know, I'm, I'm putting myself into their culture, they should help me out, and blah, blah. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, but I mean, like, I'm seeing that, I'm seeing that too, but only because I speak English. I don't know what it's like if you speak, say, French as mm -hmm. a as the only language and you go to an English-spoken country, how that would work. Or, but we learn or... English, no. so yeah. we would try and speak English. So, okay. Yeah. Maybe French was a bad example. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, like, um, like, I guess I'm just trying to pick another language now because you throw me off. No, but... Like, everyone on this planet is learning English. So, of course, if you're going into an English-spoken country, the person's going to speak English. So, it would be better to take an exam. said they were getting lost <laughs> and apparently that's a bad thing that turns them off yeah um ordering the wrong kind of food which being allergic to nuts i can oh, understand true oh, i don't true. i don't know if it's just because you know you ordered chicken and you get pork or something and it's like mm -hmm. a big deal mm -hmm. yeah depending on beliefs and stuff but uh there's also like getting on the wrong transport going the wrong direction um for me that's just an extra adventure right <laughs> Like, but I can understand if you haven't traveled but it can be quite stressful. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And like one of the last points that I felt I could s sort of relate to it, particularly at the beginning, was being embarrassed to try and speak. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, like for me, like trying to learn French. Yeah. I am uh, at the shop. I've got like, you know, the, the grocery store. It's not so bad. Yeah. But I've had a lot of time to do it. Mm hmm. Uh, but I remember going to, you know, Nepal and stuff, trying to figure out just, just like I did, oh, I, I almost became mute mm -hmm. because I didn't, I felt so embarrassed to yes, ask. Yes, 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 yes. Have you ever found that sort of thing? Distress, um, by, <sighs> I guess so, but not for small things like that. Because, and I think we've already had the discussion about it, you and me, in private, <laughs> in private setting. <laughs> okay. I think because as a non-Anglophone, when we travel, we, we are putting ourselves more into those situations, so we have more practice. So we are less scared of trying. Of course, not for everyone, but I think more than the Anglophones. Damn, in this episode, I really sound like I have something against the Anglophones. Yeah, a bit. But it's nothing against... I think it's just because culture-wise and um, for social reasons, because English is such a... Um, like, a big... Uh, how you say it? A bit like, spoken language, like it's a, wide, a, lot of a widely spoken language. Exactly. And as a French, as a Francophone, I've had to put myself in those situations, even in my own country, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So because I've had more practice, I don't feel ashamed that much. I don't feel as shy to try and speak another language because at least I'm trying. And it's yeah. kind of a... I've been put into that survival mode quicker than uh, you, for example. Because in Australia, the whole country speaks English. Well, I did some research and it's not the case. No, no, but no. But I it's know not exactly the case, what you mean. Like it's... The official language is, in, is English. So... Here, it's English and French. Yeah. But if you go outside of the province of Quebec, you'll have to speak English yeah. most of the time. You know, so because we've had more practice to put ourselves into those situations to try and speak another language, I think we're not as embarrassed. I think. Okay. I think so. I think so. 
it's that's actually quite a, a nice alternative perspective because I I guess I sort of thought that despite you being able to speak two languages, two and a half if you count Spanish, mm -hmm. like there'd still be that little bit of um, almost anxiety around the idea of trying to talk to someone in a foreign language. Yeah, but then, as I said, that's for the small stuff. But when I moved to Australia, everything had to do, everything I had to deal with was in English and even more like more serious stuff and that's when i was getting stressed out yeah like working in english i was like i forgot every word that i knew in english yeah i forgot how to english yeah basically be because it was about important stuff it, it wasn't just about getting a hotel room checking yeah. in yeah it was about my social security number it was about my phone number it was about an interview for a job to be able to survive and <laughs> earn money you know so i'm just i'm just thinking of me trying to do it in french ex yeah see so and because of the stress like you say you kind of forget everything you know yeah mm -hmm. uh man i feel that yeah because when i looked at like one more bit of research mm -hmm. there there was enough embarrassment that people felt that they would rather mm -hmm. a 12 hour delayed flight oh, shit. <laughs> than go to a country that spoke a foreign language seriously yeah wow. yeah yeah it was on like duolingo or something also none of this is sponsored by the way we're not affiliated it's just what i found yet yes <laughs> <laughs>
go there. Was that then, the 55 or was yeah, I like, go there and they're going to tell you. And I'm like, okay. And then we walk, we go to another bus station. And in that place, they were only speaking Spanish. But and they were like, oh, let's try it this street. And then someone came with us to show us. Yeah, so we talked, to, this guy looked particularly disis, in, disinterested in what we were saying at mm -hmm, the time, mm -hmm. and then showed us the, the next bus stop. And then when we got there, we realized that all the buses weren't the bus that we were looking for. Yeah. And then a bus pulled up in front of us. And then a local, I assume, on that bus looked at two through the, local, window. Through the window, just hanging out the side, looked at us and said, hey, you need some help yeah. in Spanish? And the other bloke next to us was like, in Spanish, yeah, they're trying to get to that place. And then the guy, the guy on the bus was like, oh, yeah, try and go that way, a la derecha, blah, blah, blah. Like, and then like, he talked to, and then they both collectively and the, yeah, then there talked was a to, lady. Like, the, to the shop owner behind us. And then there was like, we're just standing in the middle watching this like tennis game of conversation. <laughs> We and, finally, like, we were able to get the bus that yeah. we needed to take. But it wasn't, like, buses that we were used to. We saw out, like, we got onto the road that the bus the bus was supposed to be. Yeah. We saw that bus go past. We're like, oh, there must be a bus stop further up. Yeah. <laughs> and then I was like, stuff this. I'm going to throw my hand out at the next one. Yeah. And then they stopped. And then we realized from then on, yeah, it just stops wherever. No, exactly. But it's that. It's oh. like, people are going to help you. Even if you don't totally speak the language, they're going to they're gonna help you. Not not everyone is out there to try and get you. Not everyone. No, not everyone. no. There, there's not a big percentage. No. You know what I mean. Most of the people are really nice, and they're gonna try. And um, the local, if you don't have data on your phone, well, the locals are gonna have data, and you can use Google Translate. Yeah. Worst case scenario. Are you, yeah. Mm. And that and that sort of leads wonderfully into yeah. my next point. Oh yeah. Oh, into our next topic. Yeah, because you're actually leaving. This episode. Uh, am I really? <laughs> no, no pressure. <laughs> um, but I just wanted to sort of talk about any tools. Like, have you have you used any? Um... My brain. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, have you used any anything like? Well, I guess you've mentioned Google Translate, but did did you have anything else that you would use before going to a certain country? To help you before or during? Like an app like a Duolingo and I would learn some Italian, the, the basics, and I would just download some some apps or go to websites with the basic you need when you go to that country and I would learn it and I would always have that page on my phone if I quickly need it. Okay. Okay, so you had like um, like almost a phrase book. Almost. Almost, yeah. But you, almost. But you created said phrases. No. No. no, just like the basic words, like, oh, yes, okay, yeah. I want to have, thank you, because uh, in Poland, it's 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 a language I'm really not used to. My ear isn't used to it, and also um, my mouth, and, you know, like, uh, you place your mouth differently to say yes. the word. So um, it wasn't easy to learn. Some Polish words were not easy to learn, and my brain couldn't remember it at all. So I always had the thank you on my phone. <laughs> you know yeah yeah no i feel that but um i i will never forget that when i say travel with my family mm -hmm. my mum would practice whatever the language was yes with like you know like you get like the lonely planet like phrase book yeah, or, yeah, or whatever yeah. mm -hmm. and, and it would be the most aggravating thing if we're going to school or whatever and mum would have like hello in Italian and then she'd be like practicing Italian in the car oh, like on the radio yeah like like in the car like she's got the the CD like okay, a CD back, back okay. in the day where CDs saw, were a thing okay I thought the the Lonely Planet dictionary or the book yeah so she would have like the the bundle pack I guess oh, so she'd have okay. both the book and yeah. the CD yeah she'd play it in the car yeah <laughs> but like that's something i was about to tell you earlier like because with uh well, mostly your mom because i know your mom is better uh, at, ling at learning new languages than your dad no offense eh? <laughs> that was very canadian that was very good yeah sure no <laughs> was... offense eh? no offense eh? hey <laughs> <laughs> i'm just gonna talk with my moose here yeah but 
you you grew up into that mindset of like you're traveling to a new country well your mom would learn italian or french or uh, i don't know what like maybe spanish as well yeah you know so i don't know about the other places you've been to in, most, most of the other Asia. countries we, we didn't go to, we didn't touch asia because of my nut allergy okay indonesia same sorry yeah i know but i'm in asia the whole okay. the whole of asia the whole of asia okay yeah, yeah. so um yeah, because of my nut allergy. So that was one of the things that I was sincerely worried mm -hmm. about. And using Google Translate, I remember writing, I I get, I can be killed by nuts. Don't give me nuts in your food. I will die in your restaurant. Yeah. In whichever language it was, mm. in whichever country. Because no, no one understood what an allergy was. And if you get a bit sick, if you die, death is very universal. Exactly. That's so true. Yes. Because there are some words that are, you can't translate in other languages. They just don't exist. Yeah. Yes. Oh my God. That's so true. Yeah. And to sort of get past it as well, one of the things that I learned was because I was worried about, you know, nuts in foods, particularly going through Asia, I went to hostels that had advertised that they do food tours. And so they spoke English and then they could tell me what foods I could eat. True. Mm -hmm. Without me having to have the hassle of trying to have a chat to the chef and say, hey, peanut, me die. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, sort of thing. So yeah. I found that to be amazingly useful. And like getting tour guides and stuff that also are able to show you the place, but like maybe That's give you a couple of phrases to get you around town yes, and they stuff. Can. Yeah, because most of the time they're pretty chill. They're pretty nice. So, yeah. Yeah. And they like. You get to learn also the colloquial yeah ways to say stuff yeah you know and a lot of the tour guides are very like wonderfully friendly mm -hmm. so they're able to and also a lot of the people that work in the hostels are very friendly yeah and they're very happy to have a chat about you know the ins and outs of what to say what to do what like, not example, to say what not to do yeah, yeah. so no yeah. yes yeah. <laughs> like the shaking and the nodding of the head <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, because when you go to Asia, there's also some like hand gestures and like uh, yeah, like looking in the eyes. That's really important because, yes, we spoke about um, talking, but yes. the the body does a lot of talking. Yeah. As well, so I've I've never been to Asia, but you will know. But um, oh, I mean, there's like other countries that um, looking right into um, each other's eyes is uh, considered not very polite. I I have I don't think I've been to mm -hmm. many, if any, of those. But I would have, I think I would find it very difficult. Yes. But I think what I would have to do is focus on the mouth, which is what I do a lot here because I'm trying to understand. Yeah, what they true. Say. Yeah, yeah. That's 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 a good trick. Yeah. That's a really good trick if you have some basics into that language, but not much. Just looking at the mouth so that way you're like, what movement? <laughs> Then I'm just doing yeah, literally what I yeah. do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why what that's why uh watching movies in uh say French mm -hmm. it's way easier for me to learn that language when the mouth lines up with the noises that are coming yeah. out of said mouth. Yeah. Whereas like as much as I find it really wonderful watching Disney movies, which I love and know. Oh. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and, and and seeing the animation or whatever yeah. just not sync up with the noises that are coming out is really funny. Yeah. But it makes it trickier to learn. But I did find, let's say, uh, the one that we're watching at the moment, nineteen two. We oh, Disney Do. Disney Do. Yeah. Uh, the cop show is Quebecan, and there's a lot of Quebecan mm -hmm. words, and we don't dub it, and it's great. Mm -hmm. Mind you, we've got English subtitles at the moment. I might. No, but it's okay. Again, but... It's okay. But yeah. But yeah, it, and then I guess it's another good trick before going. Just watch some movies or series into in like Greek or whatever countries you're going to. Yeah. I, I did find that helps, but also mm. last one that I can think of just to add yeah. on to that is music. Oh yes. Oh my God. Yes. Cause I found that I, I could, I had so much trouble trying to connect the first time I came here, mm -hmm. but when I listened to, cause I, I liked Hilltop Woods, Thundermentals, those kind of music like hip hop. Mm -hmm. And when I found a couple of artists that spoke, Quebecan, yeah, or Quebec French. I was like, actually, that's kind of dope. Yeah, and so now, like, I know the sounds of the words. I still don't know what they mean, but I found that it really helped just yeah. to sort of. And with Spotify, like I... you can get the lyrics and stuff. And... Yeah, 
yeah it's pretty cool but it also just helps to feel like you're connecting to it not just learning it for the sake of not yeah. dying or whatever yeah yeah that being said you don't have to do all of this when you go like one week or two weeks into a country no. just learning the basics yeah the locals are going to be so happy yes so happy i remember when i went to greece with my my friends we learned the basics and we went to that small restaurant in santorini there was absolutely no one but the view was amazing it was right on the beach and the owner and the chef of the restaurant he heard us uh do the chin in greek so it's uh yamas oh, okay or stini yamas something okay. i'm sorry for my greek uh, <laughs> sorry for my really greek. Sorry. but then he heard us and he gave us another round of uh what's the alcohol what's the uh, uzo uzo he gave us another round of uzo and he sat with us that is awesome. and that was so cool we had so many good discussions about greece and the food and the people and just everything and it was amazing just because he heard us stiniamas yeah you know and that was that was great just as we said at the beginning it bring it br uh, it takes you places yeah to learn just the basics for sure mm -hmm. and just one last point yeah for i guess we call it quits yeah is be patient yeah be patient with yourself and be patient with the person you're trying to communicate to because i remember like if you're if you're like short on time mm -hmm. like for a bus or whatever getting angry doesn't help anything no no, no <laughs> getting no. frustrated and almost feeling like they're the stupid one for not being able to talk to you doesn't help anybody yeah they're trying as hard as you to help you while mm. almost not getting anything out of it yeah. so mm. i think the patience and also treating That's everyone true. like yeah. you know with respect really goes a long way mm. as well I agree. But, I agree. But yeah, so I can't remember the, the little... Yes. What was the little question So for oh. next episode, I guess the question is, we're going elsewhere with this question. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. No, but the question is, um, does traveling as a couple can break your relationship? Oh, spicy. Spicy. <laughs> that, that is spicy. Can traveling break your relationship? Yeah. Oof. We'll discuss our experiences and then we'll check. Sounds but good. hey, thank you so much to listening to us. And uh, do you want the last word? The, always. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for listening or watching. Um, you're welcome to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, YouTube, that's about it. That's about it. Spotify. Oh, and yes. Spotify. Yay! Hey, 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 An Apple podcast. Oh, true. Yes. Such a good channel. I'm trying. And yeah, so subscribe. We're kind of funny. Thanks again. See you next week. All right, Bye. Cheers, guys. Bye.